everyone. Welcome back to ESBR Boxing's YouTube channel. We've just seen Alexander Gabozdik beat Ricard Belotnik's um, be a sixth round stoppage um, as we kind of start a long evening um, off the John of the Canelo and John Ryder undercard over in Guadalajara. Danny, thanks for joining me. Um, it's the second light heavyweight fight that we're reviewing this evening. Um, yeah, give me give me your thoughts on what we've just seen. Yeah, um, pretty impressive. Like in only your second fight in what three and a half years to be able to stop someone who's got a reputation for being quite tough uh, in Balotniks. Fight started off a bit, bit of a slow pace. I think Gavosdik still had uh, a bit of ring rust there. He was getting caught with shots that maybe he wouldn't have if, you know, back in the days when he was fighting at the top level regularly, but sort of stepped on the pace really quickly. Um, We were chatting about the phrase going through the gears for the, for the Boazzi fight, but he sort of did that in the fifth round and then really started uh, tearing off on Bolotniks in the sixth and pinging him off and pinging his head about, sorry, I should say. And um, yeah, I thought it was a, the stoppage was a fair one from the ref. I know Bolotniks made it back to his feet, but the cut was horrendous and the fight was only going one way from, from that point. Yeah, definitely. I think Bolotniks, I consider Bolotniks to be a good light heavyweight. He's not, you know, he's not a top 10 light heavyweight. He's not going to be world champion, but it was an entertaining fight he had against Joshua Boatsy. A couple of years ago, he's got a couple of decent names on his record. Obviously, he won that MTK Golden contract a while back as well. Um, a lot of his wins, uh, his losses, sorry, came early in his career as well. Kind of we're talking eight, nine, ten years ago in terms of some of those losses. Um, just want to kind of focus on Kapozdik. Obviously, I think we said on our preview for this fight, he has given Baturbiev, Baturbiev's toughest test of his career so far. Um, which is kind of saying something if you consider how how good Baturbiev how good Baturbiev is and some of the other fights Baturbiev has had. Um, it's if if you had to do a top five light heavyweights at the moment in the world, would Gavosdik? I know it's a tough question because this is kind of his second fight back and then he could, his first kind of real fight back. Would you kind of slot Gavosdik um, in that in that top five alongside Baturbiev and Bivol? I think you sort of have to after tonight. Obviously, the Bolotniks win on its own doesn't take you there, but what he did in sort of their first stage of his career, if you want to call it that, like that doesn't just get wiped away. And obviously, you couldn't really put him in after a fight against the Journeyman on a sort of show no one's watching. But as you say, a fight against a solid um, solid light heavyweight and Bolotniks fight, you have to be a, a good fighter to beat him, really. Um, I would I would have him in the top five. Um, especially, I did think, like, after he, he sort of woke up, essentially, in the fight, he did look good. And whilst Bolotniks isn't a good enough yardstick to say maybe back to his best, certainly that he's not washed or over the hill by, to any great extent for my money. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Of course, Dick's 36 years old now. Um only had 20 fights, so there's perhaps not a lot of kind of mileage on the clock there, just the one defeat to Baturbiev. Um, Two questions left, Danny. How how much do you think Vostik is kind of here to stay, or do you think he's just going to have a couple of fights, try and fight for world title, then kind of actually retire from the game, or, or do you think we could see him fight for, for another three or four years? Three or four, maybe a bit much. Um I think he's looking sort of one more crack at a world title and maybe a couple of big fights. I suppose it's it's how the the first year or two goes. Um, if he's you know wins a world title and still looks good, he's not gonna you know call it a day. And maybe it would be three or four years. Um, but certainly for the next year, year and a half, two years, he's definitely a live contender, a light heavyweight. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um. Final question, Danny. I think obviously it looks like Bivol will probably be fighting Canelo later this year. I think Turbiev is due to fight Callum Smith in the summer. So I think it's unlikely Kvostik is going to fight, fight for a world title in his next fight, quite possibly. Um any kind of idea on who you'd like to see him up against in his in his in his next fight? Are there any kind of names that that jump out to you at all? There's one name jumps out to me, Joshua Beatze. Mm. <laughs> I've seen um so I can't remember. It was something through the week that apparently if um if Gavosdik had won tonight, that Eddie Hearn obviously 
I know he's not signed with Eddie Hearn, but good relationship with Eddie right now. So would campaign to have Buatze uh, or Gavosdex ordered in a final eliminator, which would be against Joshua Buatze, who's number one. Now, whether um, Virgil Hunter's going to let Joshua Buatze take that fight, another question. That's a very hard fight for not that much money, I wouldn't have thought. But I think that's a fight that makes sense for both of them. But for where they're at in their careers, it's a sort of step beyond Bolotniks for for uh, Gabozdik and it's a bridging fight to the likes of Bivol and Baturbev who you would still have to both have above Gavozdik, of course you would um, for to get Buatze to that level because obviously we've seen Virgil Hunter seems very tentative on putting him in with either of those two so maybe a fight with someone like Gavozdik would, would ease those concerns if he was to come through it which I would have reservations as if he would to be honest yeah, see what happens. All right, cool. Danny, thank you for your time. Nice to kind of see Kvostik kind of on a big stage again. Obviously, quite quite low down on the undercard, but would have got some some good exposure and people will be very much aware he's back in the light heavyweight picture at the moment. Um, Yeah, we'll speak to you again soon, Danny. Thank you very much for your time. Nice one, mate. Cheers.